Welcome back. Um, we're going to wrap up this video with the final one. And I just want to do a little bit of some uh, information like recap of what we've done. Um, and then I have an assignment for you. So first of all, I said we would take a look at our class to see how we would do getter and setter methods for age. So let's take a look. So in this case, um, to set the age, it's void, public void set age. We got to receive an, a variable of age as an integer. And this dot age, remember, refers to the age of the dog. And um, this dot age equals age. And then public int get age return age. Notice this is an int and we must have a return type. Now, let's take a look at our virtual dog. And one thing that we haven't really talked about is um, the, the, the fact that a class of dog represents just a dog object in general. And what's cool about this, and this is where the real power is, is the fact that once we have a class, we can use it to create more dog objects. So we don't have to just have Fido. We can have another dog. And in this case, it could be Fluffy. And we'd create that dog just the way uh, we created the other one. We'll put on here two new dogs. Okay. And we set the name for Fido as Fido. And let's do Fluffy. Because Fido.speak sends out a string and we're right in the middle of a print line, we can totally do this. It's beautiful. I love it. So it's in right there. Paste that in. Let's run it one last time. And now each of the dogs bark. Each of the dogs speech, speak. Each dog has its own unique name, has its own unique age. And so what we're seeing here is in object-oriented programming, when you have a class your class can manage multiple objects. Each object gets its own value if you set it. Each one can have its own unique name, own unique age. And there, now we see the true power of object-oriented programming and its, its ability to maintain separate objects, each with their own values. Now, when we refer to an object and its own value, the, the term we use for that is we call it its state. So the state of Fido is its name is Fido, its age is one. The state of Fluffy is its name is Fluffy and its age is five. So there you have it, recap. Um, and by the way, the last thing I wanna just recap since I said this was a recap, is that we can have methods like speak and then we can return values if we want to. And now you can see when we return a string, we can use that right in here as long as we are treating that as a string. So in this case, we're printing a line, so absolutely we can get. So I'm gonna leave you with the code here so you can kind of see how this is there. If you wanna take a pause here to see the code of how we call everything, pause it now. And then if you wanna see a pause of all of our methods and variables, notice we have our two attributes at the top we do our constructor next, so let's go ahead and put constructor method, and then we have our getters and setters speak method. 
There we have it. Good luck. Now, I have an assignment for you. So your assignment is to create your own virtual object, not a dog. I want you to create a different kind of object. Maybe you want to make a role-playing game and you want to have some kind of a creature or a rogue or some kind of character that would be in there. Maybe you want to do an object of a cat. Maybe you want to have um, some other kind of object. Why don't you write your class, try out your object, good luck and good coding.